What's going on guys? Welcome to the Daily Udemy Income Report, the show where I talk about making money on Udemy, walk you through what's working for me, and teach you how to do the same thing. My name is John Elder from CourseTherapy.com, and today is Monday, January 7th, 2019. And in today's episode, I want to talk a little bit about some of the audio equipment that I use to record my courses. But before we do that, let's take a look at the stats for the last two days. It's Monday, so we need to talk about Sunday's numbers and Saturday's numbers. Now, Saturday, we did a special weekend report, if you saw it. So I already talked about Friday's numbers. Usually, we don't do that. We just talk about that now. But since we talked about that on Saturday, today, we're just going to look at Saturday and Sunday's numbers. So pulling up the numbers, we see Saturday, we had 29 sales, $121.73. That came to $4.20 a course, which is pretty good, up higher than it's been on average lately. We did have one refund for $4.57. We had seven reviews, and we'll take a look at those in a minute. So let's see. Saturday was the 5th. Let me pull up my little calendar here and see. So the 29th and the 22nd were the other dates. So let's see. 29th, that was a Saturday, and the 22nd, that was a Saturday. So Four sales that day, seven sales that day. Saturdays are usually drop dead, dead. Just people aren't buying courses a whole lot on the weekends, usually. But this Saturday, for some reason, 29 sales of $121. Very, very cool. If we look at the promotional activity, we had two people order something from an old promo code of mine. Now, I'm not sure exactly which email they clicked on to, to get those codes. It was an older coupon code but we'll take it. You'll see also yesterday, Sunday, we had another sale. So three promo sales over the weekend for $30, which is nice. Uh, looking at the, well, we can look at these numbers in a bit. Let's go over Sunday's numbers first. Sunday, we had, again, 18 sales, $70.62. The average dropped down a little bit, $3.92. Uh, same $4.57 refunds and three reviews. Now, I do want to look at the reviews in a minute, as we always do, but we had some cool things happen with reviews that I'll point out. One, we had a, a bad review a few days ago, and uh, it it the, the reviewer on his own came back and redid his review and left a good review. So we'll look at that in just a minute. Um, very cool. So here is the sixth. Pull up my calendar again really quickly. So the 30th and the 23rd. So here's the 30th. And here's the 23rd, 17 that day, 15 that day, 18 this day. So it's sort of an average Sunday. Uh, nice, nice to see that. 80 that day, 74, 70. So down a little income wise, but course sale wise about the same. So very cool. So month to date, let's just look at yesterday's month to date, round it all up. $4.12, uh, 12 cents, no, $4, $412.20. So far for the month, we're not even a week into it, only six days, so that's pretty good. 115 courses sold, 40 reviews. Uh, like I said, the $30 in promotional activity. Total enrollment is 112,511. Always like to see that increasing. And the average rating is still bopping around at 4.52. So let's take a look at my profile page, udemy.com forward slash user forward slash John Elder 3. Total students, 45,667. 37 courses still, and 2,397. The big thing we want to look at here, though, is this bestseller badge. We got this a few days ago, and it is still there. That's fantastic. Sometimes you'll get these bestseller badges, and then a day or so later, they'll just disappear. You'll fall off the wagon or whatever. So far, we're keeping this one, which is very nice. We have this highest rated badge is continues to stay for this one. And this course right here, which used to have the highest rated badge, still does not have it. it. It lost it a couple of days ago. We got that really bad two and a half star review. I did email that person. I said, hey, you know, if there's something you didn't like about the course, would you let me know so that I can make it better? You know, I, I always like to listen to feedback and make changes to my courses if there's something you didn't like. And I said something like, you know, I'm a little curious because you gave me a really bad review. And up until then, it was literally the highest rated Django course on Udemy. So what exactly did you not like about it? Of course, I didn't hear back from the person. I probably won't. People usually ignore those. But every once in a while, uh, it has an effect and the people go back and change the review. Or they'll respond to me and say, I didn't like this or this. And then, you know, we could sort of go from there. Uh, so that's just how that goes. So looking at reviews very quickly, let's pull back up the stats to see who the latest ones. So Shaft Cat was the last one we looked at. So 
from there to Adrianos. So let's pull these up and see. So here is Shaft Cat. So, okay, so starting here, just me, five star reviews. Excellent. Four and a half stars. That's a good one. Four stars. I'll take it. Now, this is that uh, authentication course that used to be the highest rated. So we like to see a five star for that one, but uh, that's okay. Uh, so go back to the first page and find, what was it? Adrianos right there. So from here all the way down are also new reviews. Five star, five star, very nice. Five star, four star, okay. Five star, this is our best seller. Very good, nice to see that. Five star for the sequel course, very good. Five star for this one. Four stars and five stars. So a lot of reviews, not a whole lot of updated information. Now here's that review. It was a three or it was a two and a half star last time we looked Saturday or Friday and this was updated yesterday to give a four star. So uh, we like to see that a lot of times what happens is Udemy asks right away within the first couple of lessons they ask students to review the course and it pisses people off. They're like I don't know enough about this course to review it yet. Two stars. That happens a lot and it's a huge source of frustration for all instructors. But sometimes those people then come back later after they've watched more of the course and update their review. And I think that's probably what happened this time. So that's it for all the stats for Saturday and Sunday. We had a fantastic weekend. Great to see those numbers. And uh, obviously it has something to do with the uh, promotional sale that Udemy is running, the New Year's sale. Almost all of the income that came in over the weekend came in using those New Year's uh, promo codes that Udemy is pushing right now. So for the rest of this episode, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the audio equipment that I use to record my courses. People ask these questions all the time. And when you're doing an online course, it's good that your course looks well. That's important. But I think the most important thing is how it sounds because you're listening to the lectures, you know, and a lot of times it's just a screenshot and there's not, it's hard to mess up a screenshot, but the sound is very, very easy to mess up. If you use a bad microphone, if you're in a room with lots of echo and reverb, it could just ruin a course and it could just destroy the learning environment for the person watching the course. So your audio equipment, if I had to name anything, I would name audio equipment and software as the most important part of creating online courses. So people ask me what I use. I've got a couple of different things to show you. First, I'm gonna show you the first mic that I used to use. It was this Blue Yeti, it's $112, and I'm gonna put links to all these uh, at Amazon in below this video in the description, so you can click on these and check them out if you're interested. Right now it's $112, I've never spent $112 on a Blue Yeti, I've owned two of them. I had one for about a year and then it died on me, I bought another one, and I've always got them for around $80. You can almost always find a sale, even on Amazon, for around $80. So. Um, you can see right here, I purchased this on February 6, 2018. So about a year ago is the last time I purchased this. Maybe that's why they're showing me the higher price. They know I buy them a lot. But if you, if you search around or it like Black Friday, they'll run a $70 sale for the Blue Yetis. Almost always, seems like. So you can find them for $80 to $100, $120. And also if you click on these, different colors have different prices. So the silver one's only $108, right? So you can play around with these and, and get different prices and stuff. This one's 129. So here's what is wrong with the Blue Yeti. The Blue Yeti is a nice microphone. It hooks right into your computer via USB so to, you don't need any other hardware. Um, it's a very sensitive microphone. It picks up a lot of ambient noise. So if somebody drives by on the street, it'll pick that up. If somebody's walking in another part of your house, it'll pick that up a lot of times. And so for that reason, it's not a great mic. But if you're in a controlled environment, if there's no cars driving by, if there's no one else in your house or your apartment but you, it's not a mic, it's not a bad microphone to use. It's a great starter mic, and I recommend it as a starter mic. The reason I stopped using it is because I moved. I used to live in an apartment here in Vegas, and it was a wide open big apartment and had big bay windows. So my desk was right in front of the big windows, and the sound didn't echo off the windows. And behind me, I had a huge room, and it was lined with uh, bookcases full of books. I like to read. I read constantly. I own hundreds, thousands of books. And those books absorbed the sound. There was no echo. There was no reverb. And it sounded pretty good. Then I moved. And now I'm in a house, and I 
converted one of the, the bedrooms in the house into an office, and it's a smaller room. So the sound bounces off the walls, and the Blue Yeti was picking that up, and it was sounding very echoey, very hollow, very tin sounding, and it really, it was bad. It, it was unusable. It was that bad. So I had to start looking into more professional microphone options. And what I ended up with is this Audio-Technica AT2035. Now there's a lot of different Audio-Technica mics. There's a AT2080, an AT20, whatever. I got the AT2035. Now here's the thing, I bought this package. It comes with the microphone, this uh, USB thing, and a cord and a pop thing, a pop, Filter. I don't use this pop filter. I use another one. I'll show you that in a minute. But all in, this is $279. Now, this is expensive. This, If you're starting out, shelling out 300 bucks for this right off the bat is maybe not something you're ready to do. But if you've been doing this for a while, if you're starting to make money, this is the most important part. How well you sound. Even this video that you're watching now, it sounds good. There's no echo there's no distortion. My voice sounds good. Now, my voice sounds good because I edit the audio once it gets into the computer. We'll talk about that another day. The software setup that I use is a whole other thing. But um, I use a lot of free plugins to make me sound deeper because my voice is higher pitched in real life. So I deepen it a little, add a little bass. It makes it sound better. I'll explain all those things in future videos. But for today, I just want to talk about the actual stuff. Now, this is not a USB mic. It does not hook into your computer. You can see this is the cable. You can see these uh, round thingies, the round plugs. They plug into the red thing down here. You can see the corresponding holes that they plug into. And then this red thing plugs into your computer via USB. So this is a audio interface. And it's a pretty good one. It's a really cheap one, but it works well. It allows the microphone to hook into your computer. And then you can take the, the audio that comes into your computer through this thing and edit it in certain ways in real time. And I'll show you how to do that at another time with software. But anyway, this is obviously more complicated. So you can get this same microphone with a USB plug-in and it'll plug right into your computer. It's, it's, the, it's the Audio Technica AT something else. It's, it's got a different number. You can search for that if you're interested. But I don't recommend that you do that because a USB microphone is not going to sound as good as one with a real audio cable running through a USB interface, you know, so you can get a clear signal. It's just not going to sound as good. So this is what I own. I love it. It is fantastic. I can't say enough th good things about it. Now, at the end of the day, you just need a good microphone. It doesn't have to be the best microphone because, like I said, we're going to clean up the sound with editing software, audio editing software. So, you know, you don't have to spend thousands, even hundreds of dollars on a microphone. This is probably the high end of what I would spend. You could easily spend 10 times this on a microphone. You can spend $20,000 on a microphone. You don't need to. This works just well, as you can tell from listening to this video. So this is the microphone. Next, I use this. It's a, just an arm. You can see it attaches to my desk. This allows me to swing the microphone around and get it right where I want it to to sound the best, you know, but also more importantly, what this does is allows the microphone to be off of the desk because I'm always hitting the desk. Like, listen, can you even hear those pops? You would with the Blue Yeti. The Blue Yeti sits on the desk, right? And every time you hit the desk, every time you click your mouse, every time you hit the keyboard, it, it picks up that click noise. And that's no good, you know. So this this little arm is $11. Why not, right? And finally, the last thing I have is this pop filter. This goes right over the microphone. You can see that the microphone comes with this one, but it was big and unruly. And it had this big arm that swings out and got, got in the way of this thing. So I just bought this little $9 one, and it just clips right onto the microphone itself. And a pop filter, it guards the microphone from spit, obviously, but it also, uh, you know, as you say different type of things like p -p -p -p, that p pop noise, microphones will pick that up. A pop filter is supposed to sort of cut down on that. So everybody that uses microphones for, in any professional manner always has a pop filter on it. Uh, so that's just what that is. Nine bucks, might as well. So that's my setup. This is the 
the beast. I love this microphone. It is fantastic. I've only had it for about six months or so, but when I listen to this versus the video and the audio from my blue Yeti, even from back when I was in my other apartment and it sounded good, it's night and day difference. You can tell a thousand percent how much better it is. You're making your living doing this, you know, you're making money doing this. You need professional sounding audio. It has to sound good. Otherwise, it's a joke. Otherwise, you're just wasting everybody's time, your time and your students' time. Might as well do it. And 279 plus another 10 for this and another 10 for this. We're talking 300 bucks ish to go all in and have really almost as professional as you can want. Now, like a movie studio or a television studio is going to have better microphones, but just barely. It's just marginally better. You're not going to be able to tell the difference for internet video at all. So 300 bucks all in pretty good. Like I said, I'm going to put the links to all of these things below this video. So if you're interested in purchasing the same ones that I have, you can click on those links. They are affiliate links. So I earn like a couple bucks if you actually buy that, whatever. <laughs> so that's just how that is. So that's it for today's report. If you like this episode, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and also check out CourseTherapy.com for more tips, tricks, and online course awesomeness. My name is John Elder from CourseTherapy.com, and we'll see you again tomorrow morning.